What does the end of the world look like? In Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, Arthur Dent wakes up on any regular day to find his house is in the way of an in-progress interstate and will be demolished. His world is ending, his house will be smashed, his goods displaced, and his life uprooted. His world is ending with a bulldozer led by an unrelenting bureaucracy. Then this happens. If you were to ask fans of the Halo series circa 2009, several years after Halo 3 has come and gone, the end of the world would look like the Halo rings firing. It's your main objective for the worst mission in Halo 1. Led by the robotic caretaker of the ring, 343 Guilty Spark, you fight through hordes of zombies, find the key, and take it to the control room to fire the ring. Luckily, Cortana is there to stop you. She lets you know plain and simple that Halo doesn't kill Flood, it kills their food. Seeing one of these rings fire would mean the end of the world. All life wiped out to starve the flood of its food source, leaving the universe empty. I can't deny the pull of the end of the world. Seeing an artist turn such a nebulous concept into words, color, shape, or movement tends to create good results, or at least interesting results. When Halo Reach hit the scene, there was no mistake about what was going to happen. You won't play as Master Chief, you won't escape the planet, and you won't save the world. Your destiny was alluded to years ago in the first Halo novel, The Fall of Reach. Not only does the book by Eric Noland detail the rise of the Spartan II program, but it details why, counterinsurgency, and how, kidnapping and experimenting on children. We follow John 117, Master Chief, into super soldierdom and into a full-on assault with the Covenant on Reach. It's in this book that we learn what it means for the Covenant to glass a planet. Halopedia calls glassing the process by which Covenant ships bombard a planet from orbit using heavy plasma weaponry. The superheated plasma melts human colonies, bodies, and land masses into molten liquid, which hardens into a glass-like substance. The surface of planets left as little more than a spherical, smudged, and broken mirror. My 12-year-old brain thought this was the most wicked thing in the world. Step aside, Larry Niven. Climb into the grave, Orison Scott Card. Your thousands of words about sci-fi tech and worlds and aliens that are near Eldritch are nothing compared to the might of a Covenant fleet, sitting still in the vastness of space, melting a planet into glass. We know what the end of the world looks like now, but how long does it take? How long would it take your world to end? My brain likes to think in broad dramatics and has been known to think my entire world was collapsing around me. It's happened several times. I thought this when I was nine years old and was forcefully moved away from my hometown. That didn't take long though. In my memory it exists as a conversation and then we were moved. But perhaps that's just memory's way of condensing a thing and making time irrelevant. I'm sure if you think hard enough, you can think of a moment when your world ended. How long did that take? A few minutes? An hour? Or did it happen slowly? On January 15th, 2009, at exactly 12.25 a.m., Bociferous over on the Ascendant Justice blog posted Unworlding. In it, the Forerunner main character has just activated the arc, beginning the process of annihilation. For him, it would be nice for it to be over in the blink of an eye. Had his own will governed the next few moments, he easily would have leapt from the edge of the platform and fallen far below. But it's not. He will not die with the end of the world. His fate is maybe worse. To Vociferous, the world ended in 1,500 words. The Covenant invaded Reach in July 2552. The glassing of Reach ended September 27th that same year. Halo Reach is a video game where we know the world will end, and it will not end with a bang. It takes time. And despite my love of glassing, I had doubts that Reach would be worth the effort. If you think about it, they spoiled it with the book. When you know the world is going to end, and you know exactly how long, what's even the point? It's 2022 and I'm playing Halo Reach again. The first thing I noticed is how beautiful it is. I get goosebumps at the cinematics. I'm getting goosebumps right now just reading the lines in the script I wrote. 
I think about the end of the world, and I wonder why Bungie made it so beautiful. And it's not just a judgment on my part either. The leap from Halo 3's photography to Halo Reach's is astounding. The camera work, the framing, the colors. Halo Reach is filmic in a way that most games, let alone other Halos, fail to even glimpse. Far before the new God of War and far before Metal Gear Solid 5, Halo Reach was making a film. This is Halo as directed by Hideo Kojima, with handheld cameras following Noble Team like a documentary. We are watching the story of the fall of Reach. We are playing through the war film made about the Spartans that died on that planet, about the countless lives lost to the Covenant. Even with this sort of documentary camera work, the game doesn't follow any sort of propaganda angle with its writing. Halo Reach is a tragedy in the classical sense. The team at Bungie use our own knowledge of Reach to make us part of the story, to give it dramatic irony, like a Shakespearean work. Early on, there's a moment where George shows kindness to a woman who has just lost her father, and I can't help but think, what does it matter? She's going to die soon anyways. To my surprise, the different characters echoed my sentiments. Emile always thinks kindness is unnecessary. Kat is always digging where she shouldn't be, and the captain is always under the gun. His world is always ending, it seems. Halo Reach thrives in its deep breaths. The action is good, what you'd expect from a Halo, but what holds more weight are the moments in between, when we see the planet, when no one is talking and we're just looking. These moments are Halo as directed by Yasujiro Ozu. Time is all that matters when the world is ending. In Tokyo Story, Ozu cuts to a vase to show, well, many things, as Nerd Rider might point out, but literally he cuts to it to show the passage of time. Time is all that matters when the world is ending. So when Reach cuts to the landscape, that's the game turning to me to say, just wait a little while longer before it's all gone. The tragedy of Halo Reach is that fighting is not enough, that there are truly some things that just destroy you and you cannot push them back. The younger me probably didn't get it when I first played the game. That younger me had the fighting spirit, but now, older, wiser, I see this game and nod my head solemnly, remembering times I fought for something, only for it to be a worthless endeavor. There was a position of Polygon that I stressed over and worked really hard on my video on. There was the relationship that never should have happened in the first place. So many other tiny little battles. And the beauty of Halo Reach is that it doesn't condemn that fighting. In fact, Halo Reach dares to say that the fighting matters. Halo Reach kills your friends, throws you out of a ship in orbit, bombards you with a crew of Covenant ships ready to glass the planet, and says, but isn't it such a beautiful fall? The choice to fight in face of it all is noble. It's the beauty in the tragedy. Beyond George's self-sacrifice, everyone else dies a dog's death. Kat is shot through by a sniper. Emil is stabbed repeatedly by Covenant elites. The captain is shot and crashes his ship into one of many scarabs, hardly making an impact. It's sad. Like it's it's hard to, it's hard to say anything other than it's sad. Sometimes it's it's so anticlimactic that it just feels flat, but it's the point. There's no guarantee that what Noble Team is doing will lead to anything. We know that Reach will be glassed. We know the ending. We know the time frame. The team at Bungie knew all of this as well. Noble team, though, they do not. And it's in that where you see... Somebody tell me this ain't happening. UNSC frigate Grafton, do you copy? Grafton is dust. We need to get out of here now. That's one of my favorite moments of Halo Reach, but my favorite mission is Exodus. It's when the entire planet gets the picture and realizes evacuation is the best option. The Covenant are invading full force, sending in brute squads whose only mission in all of this is to ransack every human building they land on and torture everyone they get their hands on. It's my favorite mission because it captures the mood perfectly. There are pockets of tragedy where bodies are strewn across the ground, a landscape of bloody civilians. There are pockets of horror where the kamikaze grunts turn the tight hallways into a different kind of hell, edging closer to Resident Evil. This is Halo as directed by Shinji Mikami. Another one of my favorite moments comes in the mission directly after Exodus. 
It's one of those images that will live with me forever, glassed into the ridges of my brain. It was the image young me was hoping to see when they read Fall of Reach for the first time. The image of a world ending. What is the purpose of filming the end of the world? What is the purpose of writing it? The purpose of playing it and navigating it? What am I doing when I watch this or when I play Reach or when I write this script? I feel a dearth between that question and whatever the answer may be. Just this wide canyon of blackness where purposelessness lies. Where the act is all that matters. The act of watching, writing, playing. It's 2022, and I'm playing Halo Reach again. It's been several months since I wrote that first paragraph of this script, and I'm going through a rough time. My life, as I know it, has just ended, just as I turned 30. My world is being glassed into molten, malleable magma. It will ooze and shift and solidify. It will be burned and scarred, made different, Unconquered, but defeated. I'm playing Halo Reach to pass the time till the magma cools and I can walk its surface again. I'm playing Halo Reach simply because. It's beautiful, yes. The music is lovely, of course. Some of the best in the business. The gameplay is good, as expected from Halo. The world is ending, just as written many years ago. And I am in the gulf in between, waiting for the new world to begin.